Grazie Marco. Thank you. Good morning everyone and welcome to the sixth session of the World Congress for Freedom of Scientific Research. First of all, I'd like to thank Professor Sara Enyang Gbor, African Union Commissioner for Research, for facilitating and hosting this sixth session in the uh, headquarters of the African Union. For the Luca Goshon Association, which has been uh, acting as the permanent secretary of the Congress for 16 years, it is an honor to be able to meet here today before representatives of African institutions, international organizations uh, of governments represented uh, at the highest levels. Uh, we have here experts uh, and uh, human rights activists, uh, students and jurists and many parliamentarians uh, are attending this meeting. <coughs> Special thanks to Professor Richard Roberts for coming from the other side of the world. It is not usual for a Nobel Prize winner to devote so much attention and passion to the most institutional part of this work. Thank you on behalf of us all. But what is the World Congress for Freedom of Scientific Research? The Congress is a permanent forum that we launched in 2004 to foster dialogue between the scientific community and decision makers. In those years, that dialogue was very problematic. The mobilization of scientists and citizens led the United Nations to adopt a convention to ban human cloning. Yes, human cloning a formula that ambiguously referred to both reproductive and uh, therapeutic uh, uh, cloning. Uh, scientists were published promising studies on the possible therapeutic use uh, of stem cells uh, extracted from embryos, uh, even unsuitable for pregnancy on residual stem cells uh, donated to science. There were also rigged studies and scams, uh, but they were named and shamed. And thanks to the public debate, uh, we could uh, disclose those practices. Uh, those malpractices were unethical and had been hampering serious research that they finally began to give the first positive results in clinical trials in recent years. And we are so glad that two among the most important people uh, uh, recording their successes, Pete Coffey and Malin Palmer, are together with us in Addis Ababa. They will take the floor in the first panel. The title of this meeting, World uh, um, Congress for the Freedom of Scientific Research, was suggested by Marco Pannella, one of the Italian politicians and founders of the Radical Party who dedicated most of his political activity at the beginning of the 1980s to Africa. He fought against hunger and wars in Africa. Marco Panella was involved in the Congress for the Freedom of Culture in his youth. That Congress, as you may know, was also supported by the Central Intelligence Agency, and it joined uh, together intellectuals, writers, philosophers and politicians who believed that resources had to be invested in the fight against totalitarian ideologies that rose and gained strength after the Second World War. She is not supporting this Congress, at least not until today, but luckily we have thousands of experts who are giving professional contribution and showing their commitment in public affairs. As UNESCO states, science is a common good of the human race, and as such, International law must protect science uh, due to its contribution to cultural progress. You know, our association is named after Luca Coscione. He was an academic uh, in economics and he was affected by ALS. He intended to give his association an international reach and he followed in the footsteps of activists in the 50s. He believed in the fight against obscurantism, scientific denialism, ideological prohibitions or arbitrary restrictions. He strongly supported scientific method and free research, the sharing of knowledge with other scientists. 
and with the public. He believed that public opinion could support science. He was a staunch supporter of free choice for everyone and self-determination. A vision that still characterized us and that dozens of Nobel laureates have embraced. The same holds true for Marco Panella's fight against hunger and wars 40 years ago, which was supported by over 120 Nobel Prize laureates. Luca Coscioni unfortunately died in 2006, shortly after the second meeting of the World Congress. But I'm sure he would be glad and proud to know that his vision still lives on after five meetings in Europe and we're finally in Africa today. The decision to organize this session of the African Union came after the discussion we had during the session organized at the European Parliament in Brussels in April 2018. We deemed necessary to structure Europe's relations with Africa in a radically different way. The immediate positive response we received from our African friends shows that it was high time we took that decision. That is why, in agreement with Commissioner Agbor, we decided to name our meeting after the right to enjoy the benefits of science. This expression is taken from the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, which is one of the most ratified uh, treaties in the world. All countries recognize those principles uh, and by ratifying this covenant, they stated on paper at least that they are committed to fulfill the obligation arising from it. And if this is true, all states must be put in a position to ensure that the human right to science can be fully enjoyed. That is why we thought it appropriate to, to launch this dialogue between Africa and Europe. It's had many partnership in human rights, in the same way we need to give ourselves human and financial resources. We need to create cooperation mechanisms. Institutions should work together to protect and promote science, as stated by UNESCO, and as further detailed in the General Commentary on Science, adopted earlier this year by the UN Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. Science is a powerful ally for the achievement of sustainable development goals. Scientists will stand by African states in the pursuit of peace, security and prosperity as envisaged in the Agenda 2063 for Africa. Science is one of the pillars of democracy and of the rule of law. Hence, thank you for being here. Thank you again to our Commissioner and her staff for facilitating and hosting the students. We hope that after these debates we're going to be able to submit recommendations on how to help strengthening the human right to science, starting from Africa, by means of cooperation, inclusion and uh, exchange of views. I wish you all a fruitful session. Thank you.